Merry Winter Wish. It was the winter holidays on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited. That evening, Knapford Station was going to be decorated with lots of winter lights. There were to be red lights, green lights, sparkling lights, and even snowflake lights. Thomas chuffed into Brendam Docks. All the engines were huffing and puffing busily. Salty rolled over. He had some important news. The engines liked important news. A ship will arrive from the mainland. It'll deliver a special winter holiday light for Knapford Station. It will be the biggest light of all. The engines wished with wonder. What's the light called? It is called the Star of Knapford. It's a very special star. If an engine passes by it, they can make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, their wish will come true. The engines were very excited. They couldn't wait to see the Star of Knapford. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, you must wait here. You will have a special to deliver. Yes, sir. Thomas's axles tingled and trembled. A special was best of all. Thomas watched and waited. Then, his special arrived. Shiver me timbers, Thomas! Look at that! Cranky lowered the Star of Knapford gently onto a flatbed. The stars sparked and sparkled. It looked wonderful. Thomas, you will pull the star of Knapford to Knapford Station. Thomas was excited. He thought his pistons would pop. Bubbling boilers! I can't wait to tell my friends about my special. So Thomas buffered up to the star of Knapford. Then he chuffed cheerfully off to Knapford Station. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. The star of Knapford shimmered on his flatbed. Then Thomas saw Percy chuff across the bridge above. An idea popped in Thomas's pistons. I'm sure Percy would like to make a wish. Then maybe. Just maybe, Percy's wish will come true, just like Salty said. So Thomas didn't take the track to Knapford Station. He puffed quickly to follow Percy. At last, Thomas was side by side with Percy. Percy, Percy, I have the star of Knapford on my flatbed. Percy was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Are you taking the star to Knapford Station? Yes, Percy. After you have made a wish. So Thomas pulled the star alongside Percy. Percy looked at the star. Then he closed his eyes tight. I made a wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas very happy. Now I must hurry. Next, Thomas saw Henry chuffing cheerfully. I'm sure Henry would like to make a wish. So Thomas wished and whistled away to follow Henry. Thomas raced after Henry, all the way to Tidmiss Sheds. Henry saw the star of Knapford on Thomas's flatbed. His boiler bubbled brightly. Oh, Thomas! You're lucky. Are you taking the star to Knapford? Yes, Henry. After you have made a wish. So Henry closed his eyes. I made my wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas even more happy. Hooray! I hope all my friends' wishes will come true. Thomas chuffed on to Knapford Station. James puffed quickly past. I'm sure James would like to make a wish. So Thomas raced after James. 
Thomas chased James all the way up Gordon's Hill. Then there was trouble. Thomas rattled and raced down the hill. Stop, James! Thomas's flatbed jiggled and joggled. The star of Natford wiggled and wobbled. Thomas was worried. Cinders and ashes, this is fast! Thomas applied his brakes. His wheels squawked and squeaked. Sparks flickered and flashed. At last, Thomas screeched to a stop. The star of Knapford flew high into the sky. It floated and flickered right over James and Henry and Percy. Then crashed with a crunch and a crack onto the track in front of Thomas. Thomas gasped. The star is broken. Now my friend's wishes might not come true. And it's all my fault. Thomas was upset. How can I get the star to Knapford now? Sir Topham Hatt and the other engines will be waiting. Thomas decided to make a wish. Maybe, just maybe, my wish will come true. Thomas closed his eyes. I wish that one of my friends would come to help me. Suddenly, Percy, Henry, and James whooshed towards him. Thomas's wheels wobbled with wonder. We saw the star of Knapford fly high in the sky. Are you all right, Thomas? Thomas looked at his friends. Then he looked at the broken star. I have been a very silly engine. I wanted you all to make wishes, so I didn't go straight to Knapford. I puffed too far and too fast. Please, will you help me? Thomas's friends were happy to help. Percy watched the star. Henry fetched workmen to fix it. And Thomas and James found Rocky. They huffed him quickly to the star. Soon, the workmen had fixed the star. Rocky lifted it carefully back onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you all. Now we must hurry to Knapford. So, together, the engines wished and they whooshed across Soto. They arrived just in time. Everyone watched as Rocky put the star of Mapford high above the station. Then they clapped and cheered as the star was switched on. It shimmered and shone brightest of all. Thank you, Percy, Henry, Rocky, and James. I'm very lucky to have you all as friends. I'm sorry that your wishes didn't come true. Mine did. I wished that we'd all be together under the star of Knapford. So did I. So did I. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. His friend's wishes had come true. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Thomas's crazy day. The engines on the island of Sodor always like to be busy. They like to be really useful. And they like to have fun. One morning, Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the steamworks. He had come to see his best friend, Percy. Percy had popped a piston. Hello, Percy. Hello, Thomas. Thomas could see his friend look sad. Cheer up, Percy. Victor will soon have you fixed. But I can't be really useful here. And if I'm not really useful, I can't have fun. Percy, my friend. No more long faces, please. You look like a squeezed lemon on wheels. I will have you fixed by lunchtime. That made Percy smile. Don't worry, Percy. I'll puff back for you, and we can play then. So Thomas clickety-clacked off on the track to see Sir Topham Hatt. 
Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Thomas at Knapford Station. So were Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand, the Misty Island engines. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand giggled and jiggled. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. We're happy to see you. That's right. <clears throat> and I, Thomas, have a very important job for you. Thomas puffed with pride. Yes, sir. I want you to work with Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand at Brendam Docks. There is important freight to be loaded by the end of the day. You must show them how to be really useful engines. Of course, sir. Lead the way. We're right behind you, Thomas. That's right. <whistles> But Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzed. Oh my. I told Percy I would play with him. And I don't want to disappoint Percy. But if I play with Percy, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand will think I'm not a really useful engine. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can play with Percy and I can show Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand how to be really useful. I'm sure I can do that. That made Thomas's boiler bubble brightly. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand whistled and whooped. They had never seen anything as exciting as this. There are so many ships, so many tracks. That's right. Who's oh, he? This is Cranky. Cranky creaked crossly. He's a crane. That's right. Then an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Cranky, this is Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand from Misty Island. Please tell them about the docks. I have to chuff away. I will be back very soon. And before Cranky could creak again, Thomas had steamed out of the docks. Percy was waiting for Thomas outside the steamworks. Hello, Percy. Let's play hide and seek. Your turn to hide. Percy's firebox fizzed. He liked playing hide and seek with Thomas. Make sure you find a good hiding place. Don't peep until I find you. Then Thomas raced away to the docks. Cranky was cranky. Hello, Thomas. Cranky doesn't want to talk at all. That's right. It's not my job to talk to engines. Now Thomas was cross. Cranky, you know all about loading freight. Please help Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. I must do something important. Then I will puff back. Cranky didn't like being told what to do. He creaked and he cranked. But Thomas had already whooshed away. Thomas whirred and whooshed. Must find Percy. Must have fun. Must load freight till the job's well done. Thomas was too busy worrying and whooshing to see Percy. Percy was hiding. Percy was trying not to peep. Can't find Percy. Must go back. Must make sure the freight's on track. So Thomas raced and rattled back to the docks, where Thomas could not believe his eyes. Cranky was luring Ferdinand onto the deck of a mighty steamship. Ferdinand wasn't happy. This is not right. Thomas was upset. Cranky, what are you doing? Cranky crackled. You said, help them load freight. Thomas was horrified. I didn't mean load engines. Maybe not. You weren't here to ask. Thomas felt terrible. Unload Ferdinand now, please. Then Thomas felt worse. Cinders and ashes! Percy won't be having fun at all! 
and Thomas wished like the wind out of the docks. Thomas clickety-clacked past Percy's track. Percy? Percy! Where are you? Percy was sad. I'm here, Thomas. You didn't try to find me. You didn't play. This is no fun at all. Now Thomas felt worse than ever. The freight wasn't loaded. Bash Dash and Ferdinand would think he wasn't really useful. And worst of all, Thomas had upset his best friend, Percy. I can't do two things at the same time. Percy was puzzled. What do you mean, Thomas? Thomas thought, and he thought. Then, a much better idea flew into his funnel. Percy, we're going to have fun at the same time as being really useful. Follow me. Thomas and Percy puffed into the docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand were waiting. We can show you that really useful engines are really fun ones. Thomas and Percy puffed and puffed. First you watch, and then you wait. Then you hold your car so straight. Never hurry, take your time. One by one, you'll have a line. Then you know you've done your best. You've passed the really useful test. <laughs> we'll try our best. We'll have a bash. <laughs> we'll take our time. We'll never dash. <laughs> we'll huff and puff with all our might. Hooray for you. You've done it right. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun, Thomas. That's right. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Being really useful is the most fun of all. And even Cranky had to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs>Thomas chuffed cheerfully into Whiff's garbage dump. Good morning, Whiff. You look busy. I am, Thomas. I can't stop to talk. I have to puff round the island to pick up more cars. Then I have to shunt them back here, and it must all be tidied away by tea time. Sir Topham Hatt said so. Thomas smiled. He had good news for his friend. Don't worry, Whiff. When you puff back, you will have a helper. His name is Scruff the Scruncher. I'm going to pick him up at Brendam Docks now. Whiff wished with excitement. Are you sure? A helper for me? That's right, Whiff. Just for you. And Thomas huffed happily away to Brendam Docks. At Brendam Docks, Scruff the Scruncher was waiting for Thomas. Hello, Scruff. I'm Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Scruff was small, square, and very scruffy. Thomas liked Scruff, but he was worried. Really useful engines couldn't be really dirty ones. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Before I take you to Whiff's garbage dump, I'm going to bring you a welcome to Sodor surprise. Wait here. Scruff was puzzled. If you say so, Thomas. And Thomas steamed swiftly away. Thomas collected a flatbed full of buckets and brushes, soap suds and sponges. Being clean is being really useful. With will be happy to see Scruff shine and gleam. And Thomas chuffed cheerfully back to Brendam Docks. 
Thomas whooshed into the docks. Here you are, Scruff. You're welcome to Sodor Surprise. With a splosh and a splash, you'll be clean in a dash. Scruff gasped. He'd never seen soap suds. And he'd never seen brushes. They looked very scary. They looked too scary. Uh, bye, Thomas. And with a clickety-clack, Scruff whooshed away down the track and was gone. Thomas was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Scruff's scared of being clean. I must puff after him as fast as my pistons will pump. Scruff rattled and raced down the track. Thomas puffed and pounded after him. Stop! Scruff! But Scruff didn't stop. He slipped down a siding and disappeared. Thomas huffed to a halt. He peered down the siding. There was no sign of Scruff. Then, Thomas saw a little puff of steam. Scruff had hidden himself behind the bushes. Scruff? Hello? But Scruff didn't answer, and he didn't come out. Just then, Gordon chuffed grandly by with the express. What are you doing, Thomas? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. Can you help me? Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I know. Scruff, it's Gordon here. Would you like to see my express carriages? They're the grandest on the island. Thomas and Gordon waited, but Scruff didn't whoosh, and Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Oh, dear. Thank you, Gordon. I don't think Scruff wants to see your express. Oh, the indignity. Gordon puffed huffily away. Then Henry rolled by. Hello, Thomas. What are you doing? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. You're old and wise. Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I think I have a very good idea. Scruff! Hello! It's Henry, the green engine here. I wonder whether you might like to come with me to get my special coal. Thomas and Henry waited. But Scruff didn't whoosh, and Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Bust my buffers. Thank you, Henry. I don't think Scruff wants to see your special coal. What a shame. Maybe another day. And Henry steamed sweetly away. Next, Percy puffed perkily by. Hello, Thomas. What are you doing? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. Can you help me? Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I know. Hello, Scruff. I'm Percy. I pull the mail cars. They're red and they're wooden and they're full of very exciting parcels. Would you like to come with me? Thomas and Percy waited. But Scruff didn't whoosh and Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Flatten my funnel, Percy. What am I going to do? I don't know, Thomas. But I have to go. I'm late with the mail. Just then, Whiff whirred down the track, pulling a long train of garbage cars. He smiled when he saw Thomas. Hello, Thomas. I'm really looking forward to having Scruff to help me. He'll enjoy biffing and bashing all this garbage. And Whiff wobbled away. Thomas felt terrible. Cinders and ashes. I promised Whiff a helper. Now I've scared him away. Oh, because I thought that to be really useful, he had to be really clean. And all Scruff really wants to do is scrunch garbage. Suddenly, an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Of course. I know what to do. 
Thomas's axles tingled and tinkled. Scruff, there are lots of garbage cars waiting for you to scrunch. Would you like me to show you them? Suddenly, Scruff whooshed out of hiding and onto the track. Scruff was ready and raring to go. First, Thomas and Scruff picked up garbage at the Sodor Steamworks. Next, they rattled to Knapford Station for another garbage car. And then, Thomas and Scruff steamed to the quarry. At last, Thomas and Scruff rattled into Whiff's garbage dump. Well done, Scruff! Then, Whiff weeshed in. Trembling tracks! You must be Scruff! And look how really useful you are already! Scruff was scruffier, but happier than ever. Pleased to be here, Whiff. Let's get scrunching! So Whiff and Scruff biffed and bashed. They crashed and smashed. And Thomas <laughs> laughed until his <laughs> wheels wobbled. <laughs> Merry Misty Island. The winter holidays are a very special time on the island of Sodor. The engines always look forward to it. There are parties and presents, trees and tinsel, lights and laughter. There was a lot of excitement at the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Sir Topham Hatt's office had sparkling lights, and Harold hovered happily. Christmas tree coming in! Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand puffed out of the Misty Island Tunnel. They had been working hard at the Misty Island logging station. Mind your funnels! Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand stuttered to a stop. Jumping Joby Wood! What's happening? We're getting ready for our winter holiday party. What's a winter holiday party? You make the place bright with streamers and lights. You laugh and you play. You have a great day. And you ask all your friends to the fun. Rattling rods. We never had a winter holiday party on Misty Island. Why not? We didn't know any friends to ask to join in the fun. That's right. Well, now you have lots of friends. That made Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand smile. And they chattered off chirpily to deliver the Joby Wood. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered into the docks. Then they gasped. Oh, me! Oh, my! There's a star in the sky. That's right. I'm getting ready for the winter holiday party. Why don't we have a winter holiday party? You don't know how to have a party. Yes, yes we, we do. do. Would you like me to help you? No, thank you, Thomas. Parties are easy. You must all come to our party. That's right. Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. The logging locos puffed to plan their party. We need streamers and stars. And bubbles and bells. Like those over there. Bash Dash and Ferdinand looked at some cars. They were loaded with decorations. Tip top! So Bash was coupled to a car and the logging locos giggled and jiggled away from the docks. Gordon and Henry were at Marin Station. We're having a party! We'll party all night! Tell your friends to come over, join the fun! That's right. Henry and Gordon were surprised. Would you like some help? No, no thank, thank you! you. <laughs> Thank you.
Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clickety-clacked into the logging station. They were very excited. Just one thing. Where do you put baubles and bells? And streamers and stars. The logging locos puffed, puzzled. I don't know. I know. On old Wheezy. Tip top! Later, old Wheezy was covered in baubles and bells. The logging locos were very pleased. We need more decorations. We must go back to Sodor. Stay here, Ferdinand, and find us a tree. That's important. Ferdinand chuffed up and down hills, through the hollow tree tunnel, and under old mills, until at last he came in sight of a Christmas tree that was just right. Bash and Dash clattered back to Sodu. At the docks, Dash was coupled up to another car of decorations, and they giggled and wiggled away. Percy and Toby were at Maithwaite Station. We're having a party! We'll party all night! Tell Sir Topham Hat to come over! Join the fun! That's, That's right. right! Percy and Toby were excited. Do you need any help? No, no thank, thank you! you. <laughs> <laughs> On Misty Island, Hee Haw was now covered in baubles and bells and streamers and stars. Bash and Dash were pleased. Tip top! Here's the Christmas tree. Oh, me. Oh, my. Ferdinand sighed. Do you think that's right? I don't know. It'll be fine with a star. That's right. Suddenly, the logging locos heard the hooting and tooting of engines on the track. It's party time! Sir Topham Hat and the other engines chuffed and puffed in. Welcome to the Merry Misty Island Party! That's right! Then there was trouble. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw started to cough and to splutter. Then they jittered and juttered. Baubles and bells bounced and bumped. Streamers and stars shuddered and shook. Then Old Wheezy rocked and rolled. And the Joby Log Christmas tree flew high in the sky and splashed into the pond. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. This isn't fun at all. Bash Dash and Ferdinand were upset. We wanted to have the best party of all. But now it's the worst. That's right. We didn't want to be helped. And now it's a mess. We were silly. Will you help us now, Thomas? Of course I will. We, we all will. That's right. So Thomas helped Ferdinand choose a Christmas tree. Cranky lent Dash his star. I don't believe it. And the children gave Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand handmade decorations. They're for your Misty Island party. Later, all the engines and Sir Topham Hat were at the logging station for the Misty Island party. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand looked round. They wished with wonder and puffed with pride. Thank you all for helping us. And thank you for being our friends. You have made this the best winter holiday party of all. Very Misty Island. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thomas's tall friend. The island of Sodor has many wonderful places to visit. Today was a special day. A new animal park was to be opened on Sodor. There were wide open spaces for the animals to live in. All the engines were very excited. Thomas puffed into Brendam docks. He beamed from buffer to buffer. Good morning, Percy. Good morning, Thomas. Look at my special leaves to feed the animals. I have rosy red apples for the animals. And I am to take the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to open the park. Do you have a special, Thomas? I am to take the tallest animal on Sodor up to the animal park. Percy and Edward gasped. What is it, Thomas? It's a giraffe. All the engines wished with wonder. They had never seen a giraffe before. Fizzling fireboxes, Mr. Giraffe. You are very tall. Edward, Gordon, and Percy were puzzled. Will he blow over? Why is he so spotty? Does he sit down? Of course he'll sit down. You must wait for the giraffe keeper. The giraffe will do what his keeper tells him. But Thomas didn't want to wait for the giraffe keeper. He wanted to show the children the tallest animal on Sodor. Don't worry, Cranky. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. And Thomas puffed proudly out of the docks. Thomas and the giraffe puffed happily along. Children waved and whooped, and Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Thomas slowed as he puffed to a low bridge. Sit down, Mr. Giraffe. The giraffe didn't want to sit down. He wanted to see the sights of Sodor. Thomas wished. Then he heard a familiar whistle. It was Gordon. He was taking the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to the animal park. Out of the way! Express coming through! I can't go under the bridge with Mr. Giraffe. This made Gordon grumpy. You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Gordon. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. So Gordon huffed huffily away. But Thomas didn't know how to make the giraffe sit down. Thomas saw some cows. They munched merrily, then lay lazily in the sun. Edward chuffed up. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Edward, can Mr. Giraffe eat some of your apples? Why, Thomas? Because then he will feel sleepy and lie down. Edward was puzzled, but he wanted to help his friend Thomas. Thank you, Edward. The giraffe liked Edward's rosy red apples. He liked them so much, he ate and ate and ate. And he didn't sit down. Edward was upset. Bubbling boilers! You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Edward. 
I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. But Thomas was worried. Sir Topham Hatt and the mayor would be waiting at the animal park. Then, Percy puffed past. Hello, Thomas. What's the matter? Mr. Giraffe won't sit down. <gasps> Can he eat some of your leaves? Then he's sure to want to lie down and sleep. Percy was happy to help his best friend, Thomas. The giraffe liked Percy's leaves. He thought they were a wonderful game. Leaves flittered and floated through the air until there were none left at all. Cinders and ashes. I only wanted you to sit down, Mr. Giraffe. Suddenly, the giraffe did sit down, and he closed his eyes. Mr. Giraffe's asleep, Percy. We must steam straight to the animal park. So, Thomas and Percy clickety-clacked along the track and under the bridge to the animal park. Then there was trouble. The mayor and Sir Topham Hatt were cross. They had waited a long time for the tallest animal on Sodor. But the tallest animal on Sodor was fast asleep. Wake up, Mr. Giraffe, please! But the giraffe slept on. This is a disaster, Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. There were no rosy red apples, no juicy leaves, and no wide awake Mr. Giraffe. I know, sir. It is a disaster. I should have waited for the giraffe keeper. I was silly to think Mr. Giraffe would do what I told him. I'll puff my hardest to the docks and bring the keeper here. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. The giraffe keeper was at the docks. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. All aboard! The giraffe was still asleep when Thomas puffed into the animal park. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will wake up now you're here, sir. And then Thomas chuffed away. He had a lot to do. At Farmer McCall's farm, Thomas picked up more rosy red apples. And from the orchard, more juicy leaves. At last, Thomas puffed and shoved and hugged back to the animal park. Everyone was cheering and clapping Sodor's tallest animal. Mr. Giraffe, you're awake! The giraffe heard Thomas's toot. He stretched his long neck up, 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 and then down to Thomas's face. Welcome to Sodor, Mr. Giraffe. James in the Dark. The sun was setting at the end of another busy day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were very excited. Alicia Botti was to sing in the town square that evening. Sir Topham Hatt had a very special job for James. James! You will bring Alicia Botti, the mayor, and the Sodor Brass Band to the concert. Yes, sir. It will be very dark tonight. You must have a lamp fitted. Yes, sir. James puffed happily to the steamworks. Victor and Kevin were there. Hello, James, my friend. 
Your paintwork looks especially shiny. That made James very happy. That's because everyone must look their best for the concert tonight. Sorry, boss. Slip of the hook. A workman brought a lamp for James. James didn't like the lamp. This lamp will make me look silly. Everyone at the concert will look their best except me. The workman tried to fit the lamp to James's boiler. Then to his buffer. Then to his funnel. The workman had tried his best, but still James did not like his lamp. It makes me look silly. I will not wear that silly lamp. And James puffed huffily out of the steamworks to pick up the very important visitors. Later at the next junction, James met an engine. The engine was Thomas. Thomas's lamp was shining brightly. Hello, James. Where's your lamp? It was dark now. James couldn't see which engine was there. Lamps just make engines look silly. Goodbye, Henry. I'm not Henry. I'm Thomas. But James didn't hear. He was already puffing away into the darkness. The evening became darker and darker. Now James could see even less. Then there was trouble. There was a station ahead. This is where I pick up Alicia Botti and the mayor. All aboard! But James hadn't picked up Alicia Botti and the mayor. He had picked up Farmer McColl and his prize cow. James hadn't seen them on the platform. It was too dark. James could hardly see anything. At the next junction, James met an engine. The engine was Edward. Edward had his lamp on. Hello, James. Where's your lamp? James couldn't see which engine was there. Lamps make engines look silly. Goodbye, Percy. I'm not Percy. I'm Edward. But James didn't hear. He was already chuffing into the darkness. The night was now very dark. This is where I pick up the Sodor Brass Band. But it wasn't the Sodor Brass Band. It was Farmer Trotter and his herd of prize pigs. All aboard! But James couldn't see them on the platform. James couldn't see anything. It was too dark. At last, James chuffed into the town hall. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Here I am, sir. I have picked up all our very important visitors. James, what have you done? You have brought Farmer McCall and his cow and Farmer Trotter and his pigs. I was expecting Alicia Botti and the mayor. James felt terrible. Bust my buffers. I thought a lamp made me look silly. Now I really look silly. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Please, sir, I will have my lamp fixed. Then I will race like the wind to deliver Farmer McCall and Farmer Trotter to Brendam. Later, I will pick up the very important visitors. Just then, Thomas puffed in. He had the workman with James's lamp in his cab. This time, James let the workman fit the lamp, and he didn't feel silly. 
Edward's theme, then. Hello, James. Your lamp looks good. I know. Now I can see really well in the dark. But you are still late, James. James was worried. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Sir, can Thomas and Edward pick up the visitors? And I will go to Brendam. That's a good idea, James. Then you must come straight back here. Yes, sir. So, James set off for Brendam Docks. His new lamp glowed brightly in the dark. James arrived at the docks just in time. Goodbye! Then, James pumped his pistons. He set off once more for the town hall. James chuffed happily along. Now, he could see everything in the dark. James liked having a lamp. I can see how beautiful Sodor looks at night. James puffed into the town square. Alicia Bati was singing sweetly. Then James gasped. There was another surprise. Thomas and Edward were using their strong lamps to light the concert. Please, sir, may I shine my lamp on Miss Bati? Then everyone will see her for miles around. Very well, James. Now, James didn't feel silly at all. He felt very, very important. And when Alicia Bati smiled at him, James couldn't have felt more proud of his bright, beaming lamp. Charlie and Eddie. On the island of Sodor, all the engines are proud to work for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. They chuff and puff, and heave and haul their hardest to make sure Sir Topham Hatt is proud of them. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt's car had broken down. Edward was to take the car to Marin Station. The mechanic was waiting there to fix it. Edward was proud to help Sir Topham Hatt. Just then, Charlie chuffed cheerily in. Good morning, Charlie. Hello, Edward. Do you want to hear a good joke? Where do crocodiles keep their money? I don't know. In a river bank. <laughs> but Edward didn't laugh. He didn't even smile. I have an important job to do. I have to take Sir Topham Hatt's car to Marin Station to be fixed. He needs it this evening. I must hurry. Charlie sighed. You know, Edward, maybe you're too old to be fun. Edward stopped. He didn't like being told that he was too old to be fun. He thought he was as much fun as any young engine. I can be a lot of fun, Charlie. Then show me. Edward huffed and puffed. He knew he should chuff carefully to Marin Station with Sir Topham Hatt's car. But he also knew Charlie wouldn't think that was fun. So, Edward decided not to take the careful track. Follow me, Charlie. I'll take you on the bumpiest and jumpiest, the twistiest and turniest tracks to Marin Station. Then you'll see just how much fun I can be. I'm ready, Eddie. So Edward puffed away to Marin Station, with Charlie chuffing close behind. First, Edward and Charlie clickety-clacked along the bumpiest tracks. They jiggled and joggled, and they bumped and they jumped. Wee-hee-hee! 
This is fun! Next, Edward and Charlie rattled round some of the bendiest bends. Fizzling fireboxes! I didn't think you'd be this much fun, Edward! This made Edward happy. Edward and Charlie rocked and they rolled. They giggled and jiggled. And they told jokes. Okay, Charlie, I have a joke for you. How do you know when an engine is eating? Uh, I don't know, Eddie. Tell me. You hear it? Chewing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Eddie. You really are the most fun of all. At last, Edward and Charlie puffed into Marin Station. Thomas was there, but there was no mechanic on the platform. Hello, Edward. The mechanic was waiting for you. Now he's left on Bertie the bus. Suddenly, Edward was worried. Oh, my. I spent too much time on the bumpy and bendy tracks having fun. Charlie sighed. Is that as much fun as you could be, Edward? Edward didn't like that. No! I can be much more fun than that. We'll chase Bertie the bus to catch up with the mechanic. Good idea! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Edward and Charlie pumped their pistons and chuffed off for the chase. Edward and Charlie raced and chased after Bertie the bus. They thundered through crossings. They flew over bridges. And they clattered through tunnels. But Edward and Charlie couldn't catch up with Bertie. Flat my funnel! That was fun! Now, Edward was even more worried. He had not done his job. Sir Topham Hatt would be cross. I think we should stop at the next junction. Then we can ask the signal man to send a message to the mechanic. I was right. You are too old to be fun. Edward didn't like that. Then an idea flew into his funnel. We'll take Sir Topham Hatt's car to the steamworks to be fixed. It's always fun there. Charlie was surprised. Bubbling boilers, Edward! That will be the most fun of all! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Charlie and Edward puffed off to the steamworks. Charlie and Edward steamed in. Hello, Kevin. Where's Victor? Hello, Edward. Victor has gone to pick up a part. Can I help? I'd like you to fix Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin was surprised. Sling my hook. We don't fix cars. I'm sure you can. We will be back later to pick up the car. Edward, you're not too old to have fun. You're the most fun of all. That made Edward very happy. Later, Charlie and Edward returned. Kevin was very excited. Here you are, Edward. Kevin trundled to one side. He giggled giddily. <laughs> There was Sir Topham Hatt's car with a funnel on its roof. It's a fun funnel! Edward gasped. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. He didn't think the funnel was fun at all. Edward, what have you done to my car? Edward felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to be really useful and really fun. But it has all gone wrong. This is a disaster. I wish I had just been really useful. So do I, Edward. Please, sir. I can take you and Lady Hat this evening. Then, tomorrow morning, your car will be fixed. Very well, Edward. 
Edward had puffed into Knapford Station with Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Charlie was there. Hello, Eddie. I'm ready for more fun. Not now, Charlie. It's not the time for fun. It's the time to be really useful. I have to hurry to the steamworks. Edward puffed into the steamworks. Charlie chuffed close behind. Would you like to hear another joke, Edward? No, thank you, Charlie. This isn't the time for jokes. I have to collect Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin, please take the funnel off Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was fun, but it wasn't really useful. Right, boss. Uh, Edward, whatever you say. Thank you, Kevin. Later, Edward puffed out of the steamworks with Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was as good as new and funnel free. All along the track, as Edward clickety clacked, children whistled and waved. This is fun. And Charlie had to agree. Henry's health and safety. The engines of Sodor all want to be really useful. Their wheels whir, their pistons pump, and their boilers bubble brightly. But sometimes things can go wrong. One morning, Henry was huffing happily. He clickety-clacked around a bend, straight into an old freight car. Flatten my funnel. Who left that there? Henry's piston rods were bumped and bent. Oh, my. Henry, I will chant you to the steam wax. Thank you, hero. Victor was pleased to see Henry. Kevin and I will have your pistons pumping by lunchtime. We will, boss. So, you bashed into an old freight car, Henry. Someone must have left it there. Health and safety, Henry. Henry was an old engine, but he didn't know what health and safety was. Health and safety, Henry, is watching out for things that might make accidents happen. And you, Henry, had an accident. Bam! Later, Henry was fixed. Watch out now for health and safety. Anything dangerous must be taken away. If not, bam! Thank you, Victor. And Henry chuffed carefully out of the steamworks. Henry chuffed and puffed. Then, he saw a flatbed of telegraph poles. One pole rolled slowly off and onto the tracks. Henry was worried. Bust my buffers! An accident could happen here. I must get Rocky. Henry puffed into the rescue center. Rocky, come quickly! Rocky was worried. You'll have to ask the rescue manager. I might be needed for an emergency. This is an emergency. Health and safety. Rocky was puzzled. But health and safety sounded important. So Henry shunted Rocky quickly away. Henry and Rocky puffed to the poles. Lift them out of the way, Rocky! Later, Rocky and Henry had put the flatbed safely into a siding. Henry was pleased with himself. Health and safety is the way to keep the tracks clear every day. You're right, Henry. Now I have to go back to the rescue center. Hello, Percy. 
Percy was puzzled. Bubbling boilers? I thought there were telegraph poles here. Health and safety, Percy! And Henry puffed away with Rocky. Henry and Rocky chuffed to a junction. Henry saw four large rolls of wire. Henry was worried. Oh my, Rocky! If one of those rolls across the junction, an accident might happen. We must move it. Aren't you gonna ask first, Henry? This is an emergency! Health and safety! Later, the rolls of wire were safely in a siding. Henry was happy. Health and safety is the way to keep the tracks clear every day. You're right, Henry. Now I have to go back to the rescue center. Then, Henry saw Percy again. Hello, Percy. Flatten my funnel. I thought there were rolls of wire here. Health and safety, Percy. Percy was puzzled. Now the telegraph poles and the wire have gone. But Henry was too far away to hear. Henry was steaming slowly to the rescue center. Then Percy raced past. Cool your pistons, Percy! Slow and careful is the way. Health and safety every day. But Percy was in too much of a hurry to hear. Later, Henry and Rocky chuffed cheerfully along. Suddenly, Percy whooshed round the bend and stopped. Oh, no! Oh, dear! What's happened, Percy? I've puffed too far too fast. Now I've run out of water. Henry was worried. Rocky will have to move you, Percy. Health and safety. And before Percy could reach another word, he was swinging high above the track from Rocky's long crane arm. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham had arrived. He was cross. Rocky, what are you doing with Percy? It's health and safety, sir. Health and safety have a time and a place, Henry. But now there is an emergency. I need Rocky to help Toby, and Percy has looked all over the island for the telegraph poles and wire he has to deliver. Henry felt terrible. I should have asked if I could take Rocky, and I should have asked Percy about the poles and wires. I'm sorry, sir. I wanted to stop accidents, but instead, I have made them happen. May I take Rocky now to the emergency? Yes, Henry. Right away. So Percy was lowered with a bump and a jump. Then Henry raced Rocky to Toby. Toby's cowcatcher had caught, and he had derailed. This was an emergency. Now I must help Percy. On the way, Henry saw an old freight car on the track. He was worried. Fizzling fireboxes! Health and safety! Then Henry saw Thomas. Thomas, why is this old freight car here? Don't worry, Henry. I have to shunt it to the coal yard. Henry felt happy he had asked, and he puffed quickly on. Henry picked up the rolls of wire and the telegraph poles. Then he chuffed cheerfully away to find Percy. Henry found Percy by the water tower. Percy couldn't puff. A tree had fallen across his track. Oh dear, Percy! Can I help? Yes, please, Henry. Henry knew just what to do. Henry chuffed to find Rocky. 
Health and safety is the way. Just ask first to save the day. Pop goes Thomas. It was summer on the island of Sodo. Engines puffed and chuffed happily in the sunshine. The children were excited. Today was their summer picnic in the Whispering Woods. Thomas was excited too. He had a very special special. This is the lemonade for the school picnic, Thomas. You must take it to Whispering Woods Halt. Yes, sir. Thomas had never carried lemonade before. He puffed proudly out of Knapford Station. On the way, Thomas went over some bumpy track. Fizzling fireboxes! Rattle, rattle, shake, shake went the lemonade in Thomas's freight car. And then, pop went one of the corks. Thomas couldn't see what had made the popping sound. <laughs> Bust my buffers! That noise was very funny. Thomas stopped at a junction. The Whispering Woods halt is straight ahead. But if I take the left track, it's bumpier. Maybe then I'll hear the funny popping noise again. I'd like that. So, Thomas took the left track. The track was very bumpy. Whoa! If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 burst the corks. <laughs> that sound makes me very happy. Then Thomas saw Mr. Bubbles the clown. He was going to the school picnic too. Hello, Mr. Bubbles. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? A popping cork hit Mr. Bubbles. It knocked his big red nose off. But Thomas didn't know he'd knocked off Mr. Bubbles' red nose. He was too busy thinking about the next bit of bumpy track. That was fun. I know where there is some even bumpier track ahead. That means more funny popping. This track was very bumpy indeed. <laughs> if I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 ping the corks right into a field of pigs. The pigs were surprised as corks dropped and plopped into the mud around them. <laughs> what a jolly noise! Then Thomas saw some bakers. They were waiting outside the bakery. They were waiting for Emily. Emily was coming to pick up the cakes for the picnic. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? Popping corks hit the bakers oh. and the cakes. Oh. All the cakes were spoiled. But Thomas still didn't notice. He was too busy thinking about the next bit of bumpy track. If I take this track, it will be the bumpiest track on the whole of Sodor. If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. <laughs> Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, jiggle the lemonade. Pop, 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 pop the corks. Then Thomas saw James. 
James was taking the children to the picnic. Hello, James. Isn't this noise the funniest noise you've heard? But James didn't think it was funny at all when a cork bounced off his shiny red paint. Flatten my funnel. What was that? Then there was trouble. The popping corks hit the signalman. He was so surprised, he pulled the wrong lever. The tracks changed. James was sent into a siding. James bumped the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt. But still, Thomas didn't notice. He was having a wonderful time. At last, Thomas arrived at Whispering Woods Halt. Sir Topham Hatt wasn't happy. Thomas, you have caused confusion and delay. Mr. Bubbles has lost his nose. Now he will be late. When Emily arrived to pick up the cakes, they were spoiled. James has bumped the buffers, and the bottles in your freight car have lost their corks. The lemonade is all gone. Suddenly, the very last cork popped and knocked Sir Topham Hatt's hat right off his head. Sir Topham Hatt was surprised. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes? The funny popping sound that made me laugh? Must have been the corks! This is all my fault, sir. Thomas felt terrible. Now the children couldn't have their picnic. I could put this right, sir. Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. First, Thomas puffed to the bakery. The bakers had baked more cakes, and they were loaded onto Thomas's freight cars. Then, Thomas chuffed to Napford for more lemonade. He saw Mr. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles had bought a new red nose. I'm sorry about your nose, sir. And I'm sorry I made you late. Now, may I take you to the picnic? That's a splendid idea, Thomas. Soon, Thomas was steaming back to Whispering Woods Halt. On the way, Thomas told Mr. Bubbles all about the popping corks. They made a very funny sound. It made me laugh. It, it made me happy. Soon, Thomas, you will hear a sound that makes you feel even happier. Thomas was puzzled. This time at the junction, Thomas took the flat track straight to Whispering Woods Hall. Thomas arrived at Whispering Woods Hall just in time. Not one of the corks had popped. The children saw Thomas had brought Mr. Bubbles and the cakes. Thomas listened to the children laughing and cheering. Now, Thomas, that is the happiest sound of all. You're right, Mr. Bubbles. And Thomas <laughs> laughed loudest of all. <laughs> Thomas in charge. It was a beautiful morning on the island of Sogo. All the ancients were busy. Thomas was pleased. He was puffing to Brendam docks to shunt coal cars. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. Gordon was waiting with the express. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, Thomas. I'm going to shunt these coal cars faster than fast. Gordon was happy he didn't have to shunt coal cars. I'm waiting for Sir Topham Hatt. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Today is an important day. I am to meet the railroad inspector at Knapford Station. Then I will take him on a tour of the island. Our tour will end here at the docks. Thomas's boiler bubbled. 
The railroad inspector was a very important visitor. Thomas, I want you to be busy shunting cars when the inspector visits. Busy engines will please him most of all. Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Bubbling boilers! I must make sure I shunt busier than ever. Thomas puffed over to the cars. Shunting cars, I do the best. I biff and bash and never rest. Suddenly, Thomas stopped. An idea flew into his funnel. Sir Topham Hatt said, busy engines will please the railroad inspector most of all. I must find more engines to shunt cars. Then the railroad inspector will be really pleased, and Sir Topham Hatt will be really proud. So Thomas left the coal cars, and he huffed happily out of the docks. Thomas puffed into Marin Station. Percy was there. He was waiting for his mail cars to be loaded. Good morning, Percy. I have some important news. The railroad inspector is coming to Brendam Docks. Sir Topham Hatt said it will make the inspector very pleased to see busy engines shunting there. Will you come? Percy was worried. I can't, Thomas. I have to deliver the mail. But shunting cars will please the inspector most of all and make Sir Topham Hatt proud. Percy wished and whooshed. All right, Thomas. I'll come with you. So Percy was uncoupled from his mail cars, and he puffed away with Thomas, just as the railroad inspector arrived with Sir Topham Hatt. They had come to see Percy busy with his mail cars, but the station was very quiet, and Percy was nowhere to be seen. Thomas and Percy didn't know this. They huffed happily into the quarry. Then they saw Mavis. Hello, Hello Mavis. Mavis. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Percy. You look busy. Suddenly, another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I can ask Mavis to come and help us shunt at the docks. I'm sure she'd like to do that. Puff on, Percy. I'll ask Mavis. So Percy steamed on to the docks, and Thomas clattered back into the quarry and up to Mavis. Mavis, I have some very important news. The railroad inspector is coming to Brendam Docks. Sir Topham Hatt said it will make the inspector very pleased to see busy engines shunting there. Will you come? Mavis wasn't sure. I don't think I can, Thomas. I have a lot to do here. Shunting cars will please the inspector most of all and make Sir Topham Hatt proud. Mavis wanted to make Sir Topham Hatt proud. All right, Thomas. I'll come with you. So Mavis left her slate cars and clattered away with Thomas, just as Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector arrived. They had come to see Mavis busy at work in the quarry. But the quarry wasn't busy. It was very, very quiet. The railroad inspector sighed, and Sir Topham Hatt couldn't believe his eyes. Thomas puffed back to the docks. Percy and Mavis were there. They had shunted a long line of cars. Thomas was pleased. Then he heard Gordon. Gordon is bringing Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector. Quick, Percy! Hurry, Mavis! We must be as busy as bees. The railroad inspector must be pleased, and Sir Topham Hatt must be proud. Then there was trouble. Percy shoved, Mavis shunted, and Thomas shouted. One, two, three, push! The coal cars bashed and biffed together. They juddered and jumped. Coal dust scattered and splattered everywhere. It covered the railroad inspector and Sir Topham Hatt. Then it flew down Gordon's funnel. Oh, well, I... Gordon spluttered and stuttered. Oh, the indignity. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, what have you done? Thomas felt terrible. The railroad inspector isn't pleased. Sir Topham Hatt isn't proud. Gordon can't whoosh at all. 
and it's all my fault. Thomas knew he had to chuff and puff to put things right. Sir, I will shunt Gordon to the steamworks. Victor will make sure his funnel is free and his firebox fizzes. Then, Gordon can take you on the tour of Sodor, and I can be really useful. Sir Topham Hatt was happy to hear this. Very well, Thomas. So Thomas heaved and hauled his hardest and shunted Gordon glumly away from the docks. At the steamworks, Victor was happy to welcome Gordon and Thomas. Well, Thomas, my friend, what have we here? Gordon grumped and groaned. Gordon's funnel is blocked with coal dust. He needs a clear funnel and a fizzing firebox. Then he has come to the right place. Gordon, please stop looking so unhappy. It's only your funnel we must fix, not your pistons that won't pump. Soon, Gordon's funnel was fixed. His firebox was fiery, and he was ready and raring to take Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector on a tour of the island, and of all the really useful and very busy engines on Sodor. Thomas steamed swiftly back to the docks. He knew he had a lot of work to do. At the docks, Thomas started to shunt and shove. He huffed his hardest. Shunting cars, I do the best. I biff and bash and never rest. And he didn't see Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector arrive. They watched Thomas. Thomas, you are a really useful engine. I am very proud of you. And I am very pleased to see such a busy engine. I wasn't sure, but now I know Sir Topham Hatt's railroad is the best. Thomas beamed and gleamed. Sir Topham Hatt smiled and smiled with pride. Silly me, I was so wrong. I can shunt the whole day long. Never stop and never rest. A busy engine is the best.